So in this video, I want to talk about the anime known as Tying the Knot with the Amagami Sisters. I'm sure I mispronounced it and I'm sure someone's going to yell at me in the comment section. Now this is an anime that's going to be 24 episodes, the first season, and it's based on a manga. And it's a manga that I have read and talked about a bit on this channel and my old channel or my other channel. A number of times because it's actually a manga that I really enjoy. It comes under the harem, romance, comedy sort of section. It does have this kind of focus on the main male protagonist going into sort of a, an area like you know living at this shrine with these girls to study in medicine. And you can see his backstory, you can see his motives, you understand that very quickly. That They establish that very much in the early stages of the first episode. And then of course you understand the girls as well. Now, there is more to that. This isn't just the first, or first and only layer to their backstory, but it is one of the first ones. So I just want to be very clear there, because one of the things that I've noticed has become a reoccurring issue with romance animes is this expectation that everything has to be established within the first episode. Like you need to understand everything about every character that's in the story. And I think that kind of is a bit of a, it becomes a bit of an issue for a lot of stories because it doesn't allow you to build things up gradually and add more layers to the characters because everything has to be laid in straight away. And I just think that leads to a lot of rushing and just, it, it just doesn't feel very good. It leads to a lot of issues in the short and long term of the establishment of characters and the development. So I think the first episode does a great job. Uh, and again, I've read the manga, so I know where the story is going to go. But I think it did a very good job at building those first layers and it did the right pacing. And I really do recommend this for those that do want those kind of silly fun. But th this is the thing. And I know this is going to be something that will, it will get thrown at is that it does have its cliches. It has its walk in the room moments. It has its, oh, he tripped over her and look at their pose they're in. It's all so, you know... It does that in the first episode, and it will continue to do so later on. But that's the thing about anime. It's the thing about many romances, is that's what par for the course. And I personally enjoy it for that, but there are plenty of other animes that don't do that. But I think it is important to note on it, if it's in there. And so if you don't like those kind of cliche tropes, because of course you've got the sort of the bubbly younger sister kind of you know she's a little bit flirty and all the rest and you've got the sundere and then you've got the mount everest melons kind of motherly kind of character you've got your different tropes mixed in there and as i mentioned before you've got those wrong place wrong time kind of things those cliches that is something that's been in romance harem animes or just romance animes since the dawn of time so if it's something you don't like you're not going to enjoy it but even then even if an anime or a manga does it once sometimes people just complain like it's the end of the world i, I kind of look at some of the other romances out there where they had that one time that they had a walk-in moment and that was the only time they did it the entire season and people were acting like it was the end of the universe and all the whole the whole anime was doomed and i just i honestly roll my eyes at that and i believe if my memory serves me correctly, that was My Dress Up Darling. And there were a bunch of anti-tubers that were just whining about it, getting their girlfriends on the video and complaining about it. And it was just like over-exaggerating situations and just being a bit of a drama queen or drama person, as the purr to say. It's just, yeah. I think at this point, some anime fans or some anti-tubers go into animes knowing what the tropes are going to be, but watch it anyway because, well, it's going to get them views and then just whine about it anyway. It's like... It's like me going to a soccer match and saying that I don't like sports. It's just like, well, why are you here? It's fine to watch something if you're generally in, into that kind of stuff and you've got some critiques, but I do feel like some people do go into these kinds of shows looking for negativity. It's, it's, it's like hate watching. But I think also the opposite c can also be said as well. So it, it, it has its balances. But one of the things that I do like about these characters is and I'm not going to spoil any aspects of the story, but for the manga itself, as I've read, these characters do grow, these characters do develop, and they've got their own little fun little charm about them, their own little quirk per se. Yeah, they've got their, you know, personality traits that some could claim as tropes, where one of them's always throwing salt, 
and kind of the sundere, but you see her kind of warm up to him as time goes on. You even see it in the kind of the first episode a little bit. And then you've got the other two characters as well. And that's the thing about harems is that you can have two different situations. You can have a good balance where it's like, oh, three girls, it's a simple balance, or you could go over exaggerate and go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And unless the show is very good or the the manga or the light novel is very good at balancing a large harem, which not many are, one hundred girlfriends I'm sure many will bring up as a good example of what how to do a harem on that size well. But a lot of harems don't do large casts very well. And so I do like the fact that this is like free girls. Though we could argue there might be a fourth one coming later on. It's a little bit more of a fun little sort of... you understand if you've read the manga, but let's just say that there's some interesting characters that really do complement him as a character, and there's some fun back and forth, and the chemistry is something that I personally really like about the series, because it's not just between the girls and him, but there are other side supporting characters that do really bring out him as a character, and his, his own personal drives and goals. And I think that's the thing also, is that it doesn't directly tell you what his goals are. It shows them by showing the frame, showing the photo, showing him with his mother, and holding those talismans. You understand why he's not a big fan of you know shrines and maidens and all that kind of stuff, because he clearly believed in them while he was younger, and it didn't work to his favor and then you also understand his motivation in studying what he is studying it's all sort of showing not telling and that's what i like about some animes mangas and light novels is in a light novel sense they kind of got to tell you because you're reading it but in a manga and an anime they can show they don't have to tell you directly every little thing and I feel like that's something that gets a little bit missed in animes, where people expect things to have to do, like really be like right in your face of like this is their objective, this is their goal. Everything has to be like dot pointed from top to bottom to explain everything about it. And I'm sure I will see some complaints of people saying that the motives of the characters aren't, you know, aren't there and they don't exist and stuff like that, but. I think that's just, again, it comes down to the fact that I feel like people expect things to be really spelled out and really, like, thrown in your face, and I think that's just people just don't really pay attention. I don't think it's so much short attention span, I think it's just lack of attention, period. And I think that's just an issue in general, because I think a lot of it's one of those where, yeah, they, they expect it to be rammed in your face. And I do think that is an issue in Western media as well, and I think that's why some people have gotten used to it, is that everything has to be spelled out very boldly. While I prefer animes to sometimes show don't tell. Mushoku Tensei is a great example where they don't where they have the opening song and they'll just have like scenes going on and you just have the music and no talking, no sound effects for what's going on in those particular scenes. It's just the gentle music of the opening and showing things. And sometimes it's nice when you have those moments. And this anime I think does that a little bit as well where they just show and they don't need to have so much going on it just makes it plain and simple and that's what i like about these that's what i like about this particular series it's one of my favorites i have not fully up to date on the manga maybe i need to read the manga and do some character analysis videos on each of the individual girls because it's one of those that i do highly recommend if you're a fan of the comedy harem romance genre this will definitely be for you and it's shrine maidens what's there not to love shrine maidens they're cute they're adorable I think it's it, it will be a great sell, and I think a lot of people are already showing great enjoyment to it already, but I'm sure with great interest comes great hate. So very much looking forward to seeing other people's opinions, good and bad, because it always gives me an idea for videos to talk about when it comes to negativity. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Who is your favorite girl so far? We might be asking that question more frequently. So if the video does well, I may do more future videos on the girls. So if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.